All right, so the first question we're going to look at is how to handle, see that right there, there we go, is how to handle a uh, basic multiplication of polynomials when you have a monomial multiplying another monomial. And as a review from what we talked about yesterday, you would want to set this up in its expanded form so that you can better organize all of the terms. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, 5x really means 5 times x. And then 2x4, y3, that means, whoops, let me just put that back up here. That means the 2 is multiplying 4 copies of x. And then y cubed means there are 3 copies of y cubed. What you would then want to realize is that because multiplication can happen in any order, for example, 3 times 2 is 6, and then 2 times 3 is 6, the order of multiplication doesn't matter. You can rearrange this as 5 times 2, putting both numbers in front, and then put all of your x's together, multiplying and then put the three y's just like that. And you're almost done. You now just simplify, multiply numbers together, use exponents, and that will create your final answer. So 5 times 2 is? 10. Ten. Ten. And then x, there are 5 of them, so we will put x to the power of? 5. five. And then y to the power of? 3. three. Very good. And then that would be the final answer. Okay. Are there any questions about that? Any questions? I'll give you a moment to set up problem two right now, though if you haven't written that down yet, make, definitely make sure you write that down because we're about to go over that one. I'll give you a moment to set that up. There we go. Yeah, small. yeah all the all multiplication dots. I don't know, get gigantic whenever you do that. So now it's normal again. I don't know why it does that. Whatever. All right, so number two. We were not able to uh, do the entirety of this kind of problem during class, so please write down very good notes for it. The way you multiply a binomial and a trinomial is something called the box method. It's very simple. It will allow you to organize your work so that it doesn't get super chaotic. Basically, a binomial has two terms separated by a plus sign. A trinomial has three terms, and you can see them separated. So you're going to create a box that is a two by three grid. You are going to write the binomial x plus four on the side where you have two rows. So the x would go there, the four would go there. And then across the top where you have three column locations, x squared, three x, and then five. I'll give you a moment to set that up though. It's very important you have everything written down before we continue. We'll take a moment to just get that set up correctly and then we'll start filling it in. What you are basically doing though is you're just multiplying the row and column to get what would ever go inside each box. So we'll start with the very easy box, the bottom right corner. You are simply multiplying a 5 and a 4. So let me get a hand. What is that result going to be? Hannah? 20. 20 is correct. Next, it really doesn't matter what order you do it in, so I'll just kind of work my way to the left. This top corner box, 5 and x would be multiplied there. Let me get a hand. Maya? 5x. Five 5x five is correct. The top middle, this is where you need to make sure you are remembering what we did yesterday. It is a 3x to the first power multiplying an x to the first power. Let's go with Brayden. Um, it is 4x to the power of 2. Very close. Your x to the power of 2 was correct. But remember, there is a 1 in front of that x, and you multiply the numbers. The exponents get added, but the numbers get multiplied. So Abby. 3x squared. 3x squared. Very close, Brain. 3x squared, though, is what I was looking for. 3x squared. The bottom middle, 3x is multiplying with the 4. Brady, you can recover right now. Uh, 12x. 12x. The bottom left, x squared and 4. Logan? 4x. 
4 4x squared. And then this is the one that really has to do with what we were talking about yesterday. This is where I've seen a majority of the errors come up today. x to the power of 1 is multiplying x to the power of 2. What are you basically doing with the exponents? Just say it. Adding. Oh, you're adding them. So Madison, what's the answer? x to the third power. x to the third power. Very good. You're basically just doing what you did in the first problem. You just have to repeat it for each one of the box locations. Now, the rest of the problem is very downhill from here. You need to look at your box and examine if there are any like terms. You have to combine those. The way I recommend doing this, just sort of circle the like terms so they go together. I'll give you a moment to look at your own paper to decide what are the like terms. And when I say circle them, I mean group them. Like 12x is a like term with 5x. 5x. So I'm just going to pair those together. 4x squared would be a like term with 3x squared. Now everything is set up and you are ready to produce your final answer. Let me just make this a little smaller so I have more room. From yesterday, I told you that when you write your final answers, you want the highest exponent to go first and then descending from there. You will not lose points on your quiz if you don't do it. It's just how the quiz is going to be presented to you. So what is the very first thing that I would want to write down before I even get to like terms being combined? Anthony? Uh, uh, not quite. We're not, we're not ready to do this part just yet. We want to write down the term that has the highest exponent first. Say just louder. X3. X to the power of 3 is correct. It's right there in the top corner. X cubed would be the first thing that we write down. The next highest exponent is 2. But these are like terms. So we want to combine them and write down that answer right here. So what is that result going to be? Sydney? Um, it would be 12x to the third power. Uh, very, very close. I see what you did incorrectly there. You multiplied these together, but we're just combining like terms. And when you combine like terms, you're just adding. You're just 7x to the fourth power. 7x was a good start, but remember, the only times the exponents get added are if you are multiplying the terms together. And when you combine like terms, you just add. So 3 plus 4 is 7 but you actually keep the x as an x squared. The, uh, the variable doesn't change. The exponent doesn't change. Good try, though. Thank you for trying. We have done those. So what is the next term that would be written down? Or better yet, after combining these, what is the next answer we're going to get? Greg? We're going to combine the 12x and the 5, and that makes 17x. Excellent job. And then, what is the only thing we are left with to put down for our final answer? Justin. 20. Very good. And that's correct. And that's the final answer. That is using the box method. You simply multiply all the pairings, combine like terms if there are like terms, and then whatever is not a like term, well, you just kind of write it in descending order just like that. And that is the answer. Now, it's very important, since we were not able to cover all of this yesterday, that you ask any clarification questions right now, because all of these box method problems are the same idea. So a question you are having right now, you will keep having, because these problems don't exactly change. Manuela? Um, does it matter what order you put the numbers on the outside of the box? No, it doesn't matter. As long as the side that has the three spots gets the trinomial and then the two binomial terms go here, you will get the same answer. So it does not matter where you set it up. Josh? Would this also be the same if it was like a trinomial um, multiplying a trinomial? Yes, you would have a three by three and you would have nine of these things going on. It will get very complicated, but uh, your test on Friday will only have a uh, binomial and trinomial being multiplied together. Great. How did you get 12x through 4 times 3x? 12x is right there. So, oh, that's the eraser. 3x to the first power is multiplying a 4. 
since the 4 doesn't have an x, you're just multiplying the 3 and the 4, which gives you 12. And then 3x only had 1x, and that 1x comes down and okay. becomes part of the 12x. Uh, the 4 didn't even have an x to, to give, so it's only this, this 1x that comes down. Okay, that was just a little clarification. Cool, no problem. All right, so uh, let's look at problem three. And that takes the box method idea and elaborates it uh, just a little bit further. And again, this is something that will also be on the test. So by all means, ask questions. Uh, first, a conceptual question. It is perfectly fine if you give me the wrong answer right now, because a lot of people have done that today, since this type of problem hasn't come up very often, I'm sure, for you. It says 3a minus 4 in parentheses to the second power. And my question is, what does it mean when a set of parentheses is being raised to a power? What would I write down to represent that? There's someone who hasn't gone yet, but I want to give everyone a chance to kind of get their hands raised. We can do duplicates. It's OK to be wrong. I'm just going to try and chat. Please try. Wouldn't you multiply everything in the parentheses to the power of 2? So are you saying 3a squared minus 4 squared, kind of like that? Kind of. Kind of like that. So you are incorrect, but it's OK. Everyone today on the first shot has said it just like that. And here's why Jad thought that. Uh, you have a number touching parentheses. What property usually occurs when it's touching parentheses, when a number is touching parentheses like that, Antoine? Distributive. Distributive property. But the distributive property happens when a number is in front of the parentheses. This number 2 is an exponent. So that means it plays by different rules. So let's actually just try that again. And Jad, thank you for being the first one to give that a shot. Uh, what might the power of 2 mean on parentheses? Logan. You solve what's inside the parentheses and then do what you get from that to the power of 2. You, are, you would do that if we knew what A was but we don't know what its value is, so we're not able to actually simplify it. What you said is not wrong exactly, it's just not uh, producing what we need in order to do the box method, and that's kind of the clue. We need to be able to do the box method here, and I will take one more attempt at what this means. Mm -hmm. Hannah? Uh, you distribute two. Good try, that is incorrect. Here's what the setup looks like. 3a minus 4 is in parentheses being squared. When you have something being squared, how many copies of that thing are you creating? You can just say it. Two. 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 So you're going to have 3a minus 4 written down twice. Just like that. And because you have two sets of parentheses next to each other, what operation is happening between them, Maya? Multiplication. Multiplication. And when you are multiplying two binomials together, what method are you going to have to use to do it efficiently and correctly? Anthony? The box method. The box method. We have a binomial and another binomial. So you would set up a two by two box method. I will give you a minute or two to set it up and try doing the whole thing, working together. And you may uh, talk quietly while you do it. Uh, but try to collaborate and see if you can get the right answer to this one. It is just like the red one, only you have fewer boxes to deal with. And I will give you a minute to work on that. So try to get that answer. Try to set it up correctly. That's correct so far. So far, so good. Oh, you didn't write down the negative sign before you just wrote down four. This is negative four. When you multiply 3a times 3a, both of those a's have exponents of one. There you go.
Yep, that is the correct setup. Start plugging everything in, seeing where everything goes. Of course, ask a clarification question if you need it, because you just learned this just now. Uh, the 3a would go up here, the minus 4 would go right here, but you have the same binomial, so if you have a 3a minus 4, you can just go right down there. Um, yes, Anthony? You did say that could be either way, right? Because I put the um, negative 4 on top. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it won't matter. You get the same answer. Justin, yeah? Uh, I have a question. Right? Yeah. So with the negative like fours, like that thing, like you told me like how the 3a had like an exponent like a one there? Correct. Like so does it apply to the fours as well? It like, would, but because the four is a number, it doesn't exactly matter in this problem that it has an exponent of one. Because four to the power of one is just four. We don't know what a is, so the fact that it has an exponent of one still matters. It's the easy way and quick way to give you that answer, but let's just start putting it all together and, and maybe that'll answer other questions. So the bottom right box is the easiest one to fill in based on how I set it up. Negative four with another negative four. They are multiplying together. Abby? 16. 16 is correct. Uh, 3a times negative 4 for this box right here, Parker. Negative 12a. Negative 12a, and I'm just going to go ahead and put the other negative 12a down here because it is the exact same negative 4 times 3a thing going on right here. But then the box that gave people the most trouble throughout the day today, Josh, 3a times 3a. Um, 6a squared. Mm, very close. The a squared part is excellent. You multiply a1 and a1 and you add a1, or you add the two ones, and you get two, but you're multiplying three and three. Josh? Nine. Nine is squared. There we go. Nine yeah. is squared is what I'm looking for. You always need to check. Would you have a quick question, Anthony? Uh, it was just going back track for what you said earlier. So okay, yeah. Like the same okay, yeah. It, the order doesn't matter as long as um, you multiply everything correctly, yeah. So the last thing you have to do is combine any like terms that you see, and you do have another pair, negative 12a and negative 12a would combine. But keep in mind, on all of your exams, on all of your quizzes, on the end of course exam, the higher exponent term will always be written down first. You're not wrong if you don't do it. Just get used to seeing it that way because that's how all of your exams are going to be printed. 9a squared would go down first. Negative 12a and negative 12a would combine to make negative 24a. And then the 16 would just tag along for the final answer as a plus 16. And that is the answer. Again, the order didn't matter. As long as all the things that were positive and negative were positive and negative, then you're good to go.